I live and work in the city now. It's a landscape of cement and noise and crowds. It's all so different and so far away from the little town where I grew up. Clear River, Nebraska, population 1,500. Clear River was surrounded by cornfields and cattle and open sky. The tallest building in town was only three stories. Most of the streets were unpaved and we didn't even have a traffic light. We didn't need one. Every day, the Union Pacific streamliners roared through, but they never stopped in Clear River. I often think of that little town and that special Christmas in 1946 when I was 10 years old. This is the house we lived in then. Watch what you're doing. Do you have to make such a mess when you eat? It's not pancake. No, I get this way. Anyway, listen. I'm on the committee to buy a Christmas present for Miss Thompson. Please pass the syrup, Eddie. We sent Miss Thompson out of the room, and we had a secret election. Uh, Eddie. And when the votes were counted, I was elected. Thank you. So were Carla May and June and Amy. No boys. Please take your elbows off the table, Eddie, and sit up straight. We voted to all chip in the quarter to buy Miss Thompson a present. So I need an extra quarter, Dad. Please don't reach, Eddie. Pass the syrup, Dad. What? Please pass the syrup, Dad. It's better. Thank you. Mm. There's going to be a special Christmas show at the movie. I need a quarter for that, too. It's the Christmas Carol and a bunch of cartoons. So I need 50 cents altogether, Dad. Could I please have 50 cents, Dad? Oh, my God. Uh, beats me why you don't put them on a plate. Oh, I'll have another for you in a jiffy. No, it doesn't matter. I've had enough. There you go. I need two quarters, Dad. I gave you your allowance Saturday. Yeah, but I spent it on presents. It's your business. Will you bet me something? If I win, will you give me two quarters? No bets. I gave you a quarter. Take your choice, Miss Thompson or the Christmas show. Daddy. That's called me. Now, sit down finish your breakfast. Good morning, Carla May. Good morning, Mr. Mouse. Good morning. Here you are. Bye, Mother. Come on, sit down. Bye. Sit down, Carla. Oh, and take your coat off. You want a pancake? Oh, yeah, please. My dad bought our tree last night, the real fat one. Last Christmas, we had a tall one because when we lived in Omaha, our ceilings were taller. I mean, higher. Your dad gets your tree yet? Well, did he? We don't want a tree. Why not? They're a waste of money. They dry up in a week. A tree's no fun. It stands in a corner. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, but you can look at it. Yeah, I can look at the one at school. They're at my Uncle Will's. Like my dad says. What do I need a tree for? Thanks. My dad wouldn't dream of not having a tree. My mom says he acts just like a little boy at Christmas time. Well, my dad's grown up, and he acts grown up. If you wanted a tree, would he get one for you? If I wanted one, sure he would. I bet you're the only person in town without a tree. Jesus didn't have a Christmas tree. He didn't? They don't have pine trees in Bethlehem and Dodo. They don't even have snow. Uh, do you miss living in Omaha, Carla May? I don't know. How do you like it here? Don't you know whether you like it or not? Come on, we'll go to school. Well, Addie, Carla May's only been here a month. Maybe she misses her friends. Well, now she's got me for a friend, so she's all set. 
Are you going shopping this morning? As soon as you two clear out of here. Oh, good. Will you get me a jar of library paste? Please? I need some for making my Christmas cards. Please. Please. I'll pay back out of my next week's allowance, OK? All right. Come on. Get a big one with a paste brush in it. All right. Please. Bye. 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 dress rehearsal of the Christmas pageant. So report to the stage in the auditorium just as soon as the final bell rings. Now, is there anyone whose costume isn't going to be ready? What's the trouble, Stuart? Her mother's sewing machine is in the repair shop. She's supposed to get it back the day after tomorrow. We'll remind her that the pageant is Friday night. Gloria? My mother's sick. Oh, I'm sorry. So she can't make my costume. Well, I can fix something up for you. Um, you're playing one of the animals in the manger, aren't you? The cow. Oh, well, we already have the mask, so all we need is a brown suit. If you can bring in an old pair of pajamas, I'll dye them. I don't think my mother will let me. I only have one pair. Well, you and I can figure it out together at recess. Remember that Wednesday is our last day of classes, and Santa Claus will be here that morning. Yes! So be sure all of your presents are under the tree. I see there's some here already, but we don't want anyone to be left out. Also, don't forget that the maximum you can spend on the person whose name you drew is 50 cents. What's the minimum? Zero. <laughs> All right, let's get on to our vocabulary. The first word today is a very long one, parsimonious. How many syllables does that have? Tanya? Five. That's right. And what does it mean? Mad? No. Angry? No. Yesterday, we read a story about Scrooge. What would you say that Mr. Scrooge's outstanding characteristic was, Billy? Stingy? That's right. That creepy Billy Wild is parsimony. I wonder whose name he drew. I pity whoever it is. <laughs> That's a pretty fancy word. It's on the vocabulary list this week. It means stingy. I know what it means. Well, why is he? Well, he's not stingy. He's careful. He remembers what it's like to be poor. Well, he's not poor now. He's got almost $6,000 in the bank. How do you know? The other night he left his bank book on the table, and I looked. Hey, mustn't poke your nose into other people's business. Well, it was open. You'd have to be blindfolded enough to see it.
The other kids think it's pretty peculiar. What is? They never have a Christmas tree. Oh, well, just... Just tell them we're sharing Uncle Will's tree. I always say that. They think it's a dumb reason. Now, why do you give a fig what they think? Now, let's try this on. See how it looks. Now, stand up and... Uh, hold your hands up. There we go. Wait a minute. There. Oh, now, get a belt from the closet, any old belt. I want to see how much it takes up. How do you know angels dress like this? Tells in the Bible. If you paid attention in Sunday school, you'd know it too. It doesn't say they were old bitch. Now, stop fidgeting. I bet angels wore robes of pure silk. Addie, will you hold still? Dad might do it this year. Buy me a tree? Well, I wouldn't nag him about it if I was you. I don't nag. He never listens to me. I have to ask him everything a million times. Now turn around. Slowly. He doesn't care anything about me. He never pays any attention to me. Well, buys your food and clothes, don't he? Pays the doctor when you get sick. Pays all the bills in this house. But he doesn't talk to me. I'm a person, too, you know. I like to be talked to. What will he say if I ask him to buy me a tree this year? Do you think he'll say yes, or do you think he'll say no? Now stand up straight and hold still. You said Dad always bought my mother a tree. How come he wasn't stingy with her? Well, things was different then. We always spent Christmas Day at home. Now we go to Uncle Will's. Do you think he might do it this year? Buy me a tree? No. There's no harm asking. Okay. Tonight, I'm going to implore him to get me a tree. Implore means beg, but it sounds better. <laughs> now, let's see how this goes. so anxious to do dishes before. It's not in a good mood. <laughs> Any man is in a good mood once he's had a good meal. That's when I always used to ask your grandpa for things. But Grandpa loved you. I don't think Dad loves me. Of course he does. You're his child. He never hugs me or kisses me. Well, he ain't very good at showing how he feels. When Carla May's father gets home, he grabs her up in his arms and twirls her around. Your dad ain't the hugging kind. He'd love me a lot more if I was a boy. No, that's a gosh darn thing to say. He treats me like a boy. I bet when I was born, he wanted me to be a boy. Your dad and mother waited for you so long. They thought you were the greatest baby in the world. They didn't give a fig if you were a boy or a girl. Don't give me a doll this Christmas. Well, you've got them dolls stuffed in the closet. You don't deserve another doll. I want a pair of cowboy boots. Cowboy oh, boots? What for? To wear to school. Like Billy Wilde. Thought you hated Billy Wilde. 
I despise him. But I love his boots. That's enough now. I'll finish up. I'll dry them. No. You go speak to your father. Should I cover this with wax paper? I'll do it. You were going to ask your father something. Go ask him. What's the hurry? Go on, Maddie. Maybe I'll wait until tomorrow. Never put off till tomorrow. I know. How many times do I have to tell you to put it back the way you found it? I'm sorry, Dad. Well, no wonder you got stuck with a crossword puzzle. Where? Fifteen across. Something to sit on. You put chair. Uh, it has to be stool. You see there, you need the S. Fifteen down. A floating object. Oh, I see. Ship. Mm -hmm. And the H here for feminine pronoun is her. You're a lot better at it than I am, Dan. Well, if you're going to do the uh, puzzle, do it right or don't do it. Oh. Yeah. Shouldn't bounce like that. Remember what I told you? Get your hand flat down on the floor like that, see? Gee, you're good. Yeah, yeah. You try it. Yeah, yeah flat. Yeah. Good, yeah, good. Play a game with me, Dad? No, I'm gonna finish the paper and turn in early. Here's something for you. I don't know what to use this for. What? I can't use this to make decorations for my tree because you won't let me have a tree. Starting that again. Won't you please buy me a tree, Dad? Please, just a little tree? I already told you no, and no means no. A tiny tree that wouldn't cost very much? You spend more on cigarettes in a week than a tree costs. Eddie. Please, I implore you. You do not need a tree. I do, I do. What for? Because it would make this house happy looking. Well, the house looks all right to me. But it doesn't look like Christmas in here. It doesn't feel like Christmas either. I don't see why I can't have a tree, Dad. All the other kids do. Well, you don't have to do everything the other kids do. Why not? If the other kids threw snowballs and broke windows, I wouldn't do that because it's a bad thing. But having a tree is a good thing. Isn't it, Dad? Isn't it? Oh, Eddie, will you stop pestering me and go to bed? It's not my bedtime yet. Eddie? I... Dad, if you let me have a Christmas tree, I won't ask you for another thing the whole year. Uh, Eddie. You bet me something? If I win, I get the tree, and if I lose, I'll never ask you again. All right. If that's what you want, I'll make a bet. Good. What is it? I'll bet you can't drink a glass full of water. Silly, of course I can. Show me. What are you up to? It's a fair bet, Mother. You'll see. Drink it. I won. I said you had to drink a glass full of water. I did. You drank the glass empty. <laughs> Good 
Give me the glass, Addie. James, that was cruel. Well, I was only trying to have a little fun. It wasn't funny to her. No, where's her sense of humor? It was only a joke. You wouldn't play a joke like that on one of your friends. James, let her have a tree this year. It means so much to her. Why not? If you've forgotten what it's like to be ten years old. She has to learn. In this life, you can't have everything you want. It's Christmas, for goodness sakes. A tree is such a small thing to make her happy. You might be surprised at yourself. You might enjoy it, too. You're 100% wrong about that. You've let your whole life turn sour. You have no right to sour Addie's life, too. I don't want to talk about it. You don't want nothing around to remind you. But hope Addie's around. You can't look at Addie and not be reminded. I don't have to listen to this. Two cents, I buy her a tree myself. Don't you do it, Mother. She's my daughter, and I'll decide what she can and can't have. she does when she wants Eddie? She opens a window and blows a police whistle. Well, that sounds very sensible to me. It's nutty. If you say that one's more about you and me. All right, now calm down, Eddie. Seems that we don't understand the difference between a character and a nut. Mm -hmm. Let's take our seats and we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Addie. All right, come to order class. Before music period, I want to discuss something important. There has just been a fight in the cloakroom. Nothing was settled by it because fighting never settles anything. It was a fight about words and about people using the wrong words. And when you call someone a nut, what do you mean by that? Crazy? A screwball? A person who does nutty things? All right. And what do you mean when you call someone a character? The same thing. No, not at all. Billy? He's not the same as everybody else. He's sort of different. Go on. Well, he might act nutty or say nutty things, but they're not nutty. Do you remember I read to you the other day about Thoreau and how he said he marched to the tune of a different drummer? You know, this would be a very boring world if everyone were alike. And most of our, our great discoveries, our painting, our music, have come from people who were considered characters in their own time. Can anyone give me an example of that? 
Billy? Christopher Columbus. Everybody said the world was flat. When he said it was round, everybody said he was a nut. That's very good, Billy. Well, what do you think, class? Do you think Christopher Columbus was a nut? No! Well, all right, I want you to remember that the next time you call anyone a nut. Now let's get on to our music. How many of you are going caroling tonight? Good. Well, I think we should spend this period practicing carols. Will you turn to page 31? teacher, Miss Thompson, fifth grade. We're the committee. Oh, I see. How much do you have to spend? Everybody chipped in a quarter. We've got four dollars and twenty-five cents. Hmm. Let me see. I know just exactly what Peggy Thompson would like. Sweet pea. She buys that all the time. Mm, that's nice. that's no. why she smells so good. Sweet pea. Quit fooling around. We don't want to give her stuff she buys herself. We want something special. Uh, how about a comb and brush set? No. Hand mirror to match? Looks like real ivory, don't it? No, we want something even specialer than that. Fond of Peggy, are you? She's nifty. Best teacher we've had so I far. I wish we could have her again next year. She says we're the smartest fifth grade she's ever had. Well, let's look around some more. Curling iron? She has naturally curly hair. No kidding. That hairstyle she wears looks just like Betty Grable. How much is that? The tree's not for sale. But I mean, if it was for sale. It's artificial, Addie. You wouldn't want it. I don't want it. I was just wondering. Oh, lights and all cost me about 10 bucks. Say, how about a manicure set for Peggy Thompson? All stainless steel implements. Yeah, that looks nice. Imported. Yeah, and the color's nice, too. Don't you like it, Addie? I wouldn't like it if someone gave it to me. We're not buying the present for you. Miss Thompson cares about her fingernails. She uses polish. She does not. Does so, colorless polish. Hurry up and decide. I've got to get home and help with supper. This is much more important than supper, Carla May. Now, do you have something she'd ever think of buying? Something absolutely terrific? Well, I do, but it's kind of expensive. How expensive? Let's see if you like it first. like something a movie star would have in her dresser. Betty Grable would like that. That is nifty. Terrific. What's it for? Who cares what it's for? It's beautiful all by itself. Well, Miss Thompson could keep her trinkets in it. Or a cosmetic. Or love letters. <laughs> love letters? They'd have to come from a midget to fit in there. <laughs> How much is it? I and a quarter. Well, that settles that. Now, wait a minute. Maybe we can... Can what? We haven't got the time to collect any more money. Besides, nobody in the class has a cent left. The Christmas shopping cleaned us out. You're right. I guess there's nothing we can do. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute. 
Something I can do, though. Aren't you early? Well, Daddy invited me for breakfast. Breakfast? Look, to Lori. We got to decide on a Christmas card for Miss Thompson. Well, come on in, child. I'm freezing. shoulder that says for Miss Thompson. That's corny. Well, what do you want to make? How about a Santa Claus and a sleigh with reindeer pulling it? But I said Santa Claus, didn't I? Right there. That's my father when he was a boy. Oh. Here they are on their wedding day. My mother was 18. She's pretty. And 10 years later, I came along. You look like a balloon. <laughs> there they are on a camping trip. Here they are at a party. Why do they have all those funny hats on? It's a New Year's Eve party, you dodo. Here's what I've been looking for. That's them on the sleigh ride. What a big, beautiful sleigh. I'm going to copy it. Yeah, but it has horses pulling it. That's OK. I can make them into a reindeer. That's good. You can really draw. Shall we put for Miss Thompson or for Peggy Thompson? Miss. How about for Miss Peggy Thompson? Sounds good. I wish my name was Peggy. If your name was Peggy, your real name would be Martha. Anything's better than Natalie. 
When I grow up, I'm going to change it. You can't change your name. You can do anything you want when you're grown up. Well, I'm going to wear a long white dress and a veil and get married. Ugh. I'm going to be a famous painter and live in Paris, France, and never get married. Let's put from her smartest fifth grade. Doesn't it sound stuck up? Mm. Is that your mother? Yep. She was the smartest girl in her high school class. When she graduated, she won the silver cup. I guess you get your brains from her. My dad's not dumb. I get my brains from Nelson. Merry Christmas and love from her smartest fifth grade. <laughs> nicest, nicest present that anyone has ever given me. Thank you, boys and girls. Thank you very, very much. Yeah! Yeah! Now, class, I have a question to ask you. Is there anyone here who doesn't have a Christmas tree? Well, what's the matter, Addie? Don't you have a Christmas tree? Oh, I see. Well, as you know, most of the classes leave their trees here over vacation, and then we have a big bonfire in the playground when we get back to school. But this year, I thought it would be better if we could give our tree to someone who doesn't have a tree. Now, since there are two people, I think we'll have to, um... I know what we'll do. We'll ask Santa Claus to write down a number between one and ten. And then we'll ask Gloria and Addie to guess what the number is. And whoever guesses the number closest to the one that Santa Claus has picked wins the tree. Ready, Santa? Lori? Seven, six. Now let's see what number Santa Claus has written down. You sure were lucky. It wasn't luck. I knew how to win. My dad taught me. How? You have to play the odds. You go first, you choose five or six. So you get most of the numbers, higher or lower. 
If you go second, choose the number right next to the other players. That way you get all the numbers higher than his or lower than his. Get it? All right, look. Flora picked seven, right? I picked six. The number was five, so I won. Yeah, but you could have guessed eight, and then Gloria would have won. But I just explained to you why I didn't pick eight. So it's true what I said. You were lucky. Mm -mm, you're just no good at arithmetic. All right, come here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, going to have a fifth. Why? It didn't cost anything. That's not the point. Well, then what is the point? Gloria, it's a beauty. It must be seven foot, maybe eight. Yeah, but why won't Dad like it? Maybe it'll be all right. When he gets home, we'll see. Now, quick, off with your boots, you two. Snow's melting all over the rug. Ask your father, he's tall enough. What if he won't do it? Now, you don't expect me to get on that, do you, with my rheumatism? Besides, I might get dizzy. No, you won't. We'll hold you. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you wear those moccasins because you're a character? Uh, who says I'm a character? Miss Thompson. Oh, she did, did she? Oh, my. Oh. How'd Miss Thompson have to say a thing like that? A character's a good thing to be. It means somebody like. Columbus, who does what other people are afraid to do. It doesn't give a fig if they laugh at him. <laughs> How come Miss Thompson was hooking me up to Columbus? Some kids were making fun of you, so Addie punched them. Caught yourself into a fight again, did you? Good for you, Addie. Glad your dad taught you the box. There. That looks nifty, Grandma. Thank you. You're welcome. When I grow up, I'm going to be a character. Just call me. I am. He's home! I've got to go. Oh, oh no, wait a minute. Oh, no, wait a minute. Oh, my. Oh. Even to Mr. Mills. Bye, Addie. Bye. Hi, Dad. Good evening, Addie. Evening, James. Evening, Mother. Now, supper's ready in 20 minutes. You leave her something every day. Can't eat two cupcakes. Well, that's the last time I pack you two.
Where in the hell did that come from? I won it. I won it by figuring out the odds and it never being one in ten. Just the way you taught me. But you who really got the tree. Where's it from? It's cool. Miss Thompson asked who didn't have a Christmas tree. So Gloria Cotton and I raised our hands. You and, and Gloria Cott raised your hands? Yes, and Miss Thompson. Think you like the cots, do you? Do we take charity? Is that what you think? Of course not, Dad. It's just that Gloria and I were the only ones who didn't have a tree. Well, how come Gloria didn't take it home? I told you. I won it because you taught me how to figure odds. So Carla May and I carried it home. Dragged it through the streets, you mean, letting the whole town think we take cast-offs. James, that tree isn't hurting anything. I do not take charity. It isn't charity. She won it. Fair enough. If I want a tree, I could damn well buy one for myself. She's the one that wants it, not you. Yeah, well, she has to learn she can't have everything she wants. Not in this life. I don't have anything I want, you think? I want to work a crane 52 weeks a year. I'd like to go sit in the sun someplace and forget all of you. Now I want that tree out of my house. You heard what I said. It's my house, James. And I say that tree can stay right where it is. I'm sorry, James, but... You don't want me here. I'll be glad to move out and take Addie with me. Oh, don't be a fool. Take it over, Mother, because I'm telling you, if I stay here, I'm not having you interfere between me and my daughter. She's more than your daughter, James. She's a human being. And she's got feelings, even if you haven't. James, I'm your mother, and I'm speaking to you last person you felt anything for was Helen. Leave her out of this. Oh, I know you were broken hearted, James, but you're not the only man on earth who's lost a wife. It's been almost 10 years, James. That kind of grief is selfish. That child needs your love. I proved I loved her, didn't I? I didn't let Will and Nora take her. I kept her with me. I took the responsibility. While she was a baby, that was all right. You could carry her around like a doll, plop her in the crib when you didn't feel like carrying her, and chuck her under the chin and shake a rattle for her. But she was a baby then. She couldn't disagree with you, couldn't talk back. Now she's growing into a person. You don't know what to do with her. You just hold yourself away. You live in this house like a stranger. When she's older, she's gonna leave you, James. You won't have the responsibility, and you won't have a daughter, either. It was my fault. People don't have to die of pneumonia. Having the baby weakened her. It was pneumonia, son. It happened. No good can come away and blame. Why couldn't the baby have died instead of Helen? That's what I kept asking myself. That's what I wished.
time you're gonna cry? I don't know. Maybe all night. Don't you worry. You'll get over it. He's so mean. He's not mean. Jamie's a good man. Jamie? That's what we used to call him when he was a boy. He was proud then, too. Oh, he always had a lot of pride. What's so great about pride? Well, it's a way of thinking well of yourself. You got it. That's why you hit those kids today. Was that pride? You were sticking up for me. Because you love me and I'm your family. And your father insists on paying our way because he loves us and we're his family. He's always been the kind, wouldn't take nothing from nobody, even if we were starving. 10, 15 years ago during the Depression, we almost did starve. What's the Depression? Weren't no jobs. Nobody had any money. A lot of people had to go on charity. But your father wouldn't even take the flour and potatoes the government was handing out free. Dad will let you die of hunger? Of course not. But he was always mighty stubborn about accepting anything he hadn't earned. When you take a present, like a Christmas present, is that charity? Oh, no. That's a whole different thing. A present is something from somebody who wants to make you happy. He doesn't love me. He just doesn't love me. Now, I'm not listening to such talk. The truth is, your daddy just hasn't wanted a Christmas tree in this house because I guess it reminds him of your mama. Makes him feel bad. I didn't know that. He misses her an awful lot. You mean that I upset him so much that he might be in his room crying right now? Maybe. But don't you worry. It isn't your fault. Someday he'll get over it. Things will be all right. I think you can go to sleep now.
More coffee, James? No, thanks. There's another donut if you'd like it. No, thanks. Mighty cold out today. Yeah, 16 degrees. Heard it on the radio. Now, this one is for the Cots, and this one for the Henderson. Well, why can't Addie take him over? Oh, now they're both on your way, James, and means so much more if you take them yourself. Makes it more of a family gift. something for you from my mother. Christmas cookies for the children. Oh, how nice of her. Tell her the children will be very, very grateful and wish her a Merry Christmas. We found that on our doorstep this morning. Isn't it beautiful? And it had a note. It said from Santa Claus. Well, I'm going to be late for work. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Scott, and uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Mills. And I put it on. It said from Santa Claus, so they wouldn't get mad and think it was charity. That sure was a nice thing you did, Addie. I'm too grown up for trees. Trees are for little kids. I'm sure it isn't a very good Christmas at Glory's house. She doesn't have to figure eyes, the way I do. She never would have won it. I uh, know. Only way for her to get a tree was for me to give it to her. Well, I'm sure you made her real happy. By the way, I never got around to asking you, how did Tanya Smithers like her mittens? She hated them. I knew she would. That's why I bought them. Call that Christmas spirit. Tanya Smithers is my worst friend in the fifth grade. You don't expect me to give her something she likes, do you? Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Who got your name? I'm not telling. Was it a boy or a girl? Somebody you like or don't like? Did he give you something you like or you don't like? How do you know it was a he? 
Was it a she? No more questions. I'm not saying anything more. You looked in my private drawer. <laughs> Nobody in this house looks in anybody else's private drawer. Oh, I know. Under your pillow. I meant to hide it this morning, but... It... You had a lot of things on your mind. Isn't it disgusting? I think it's real pretty. From Billy Wilde. How did you guess that? Oh, because I'm a smart old character. Never gonna wear this disgusting thing as long as I live. Why not? Because if I wear it, he'll think I like him. <laughs> he likes you all right. Huh. How do you know? Yeah, you wouldn't give a heart locket to somebody you didn't like. You like him a little too. I've told you a thousand times. I despise him. I won't even speak to him. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, lots of folks don't speak to people. Doesn't mean they don't feel anything. It smells good. Now, don't touch it till it cool. Grandma, doesn't he look just like Billy Wilde? Well, he does it that. Good, because I'm going to bite his head off and chew him up. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> I pity the fella you really fall for someday. He's gonna be black and blue before he realizes that's your way of liking. My glory. It's all right to let on you like somebody if you do. Stand there. Give me a hand. There. Now, careful. Careful of those. They're breakable. Damn. Well, if we're going to have a tree, we can buy one ourselves. Isn't it beautiful? And all the rest. Oh, my. Silver. Bicycles and all oh, and lights. You can leave them on till you go to bed at night and turn them on first thing in the morning. Show sure up much better in the dark, though. Is there a star? Well, let's see. No, I don't think there is. James, you forgot the star. The one I made is on the other tree. You think you can make another one? I only have one piece of foil left. Maybe Carla May has some. Why don't you run next door and see? She won't have to do that, Mother. saving it. For what? Oh, well, for our tree, I guess. Gee, it shines. This must have cost a lot of money. Your uh, mother made it. My mother made this? She must have been an artist. Well, she 
like to paint and draw the way you do. I didn't know that. Nobody ever told me that. She made that star for your first Christmas tree. I don't remember. I don't remember. Well, you were only a few weeks old. She made presents for you, too. What? Well, uh, knitted uh, boots and a sweater and uh, one of those, what do you call it? You know, uh, a bib with a big yellow duck right in the center of it. A bib? Was I a mess eater then, too? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't my mother give me any toys? There was a thing. It was, um, it was like a bunch of jingle bells suspended on a ribbon. We tied it across your crib, and when you kicked at it, the bells rang. Wow. Do you think I look like my mother? Grandma says I do. The same hair. Yeah, you look like her. Especially when you smile. Did I smile a lot when I was a baby? Yeah, but uh, your mother said it was uh, indigestion. She'd uh, put you on her shoulder and rub your back. I wish I could remember. What else did my mother do? She sang to you. Is my voice like hers when I sing? The other night during the uh, Christmas carol. Yeah, you sounded like her. Boy, I'm going to be real combination, aren't I? Because I'm going to be very tall like you. Today. We have enough bed left. What do we do now, Joseph? Don't worry. We'll find some place. Patty, who's that? Gloria. Gee, you're a terrific cow. I didn't even know you. And you look angelic. I hear you've got a great big Christmas tree. So have we. Santa Claus brought it. <laughs> you're wearing your locket. Mm. I didn't want to. My grandmother implored me to. Look, 
but a huge star shines over Bethlehem. I have never seen such a star. What does it mean? I am frightened. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day, in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Glory, Glory to God in the highest, and on this earth, peace and goodwill toward men. We never talked to each other about what happened to us that Christmas. We still weren't much for telling our feelings in my family. And I won't pretend that it solved everything between my father and me. We continued to do enthusiastic battle with each other for another 20 years. But after that, each of us knew that there was a person somewhere behind the defenses on the other side, and we never forgot it. We had a Christmas tree every year after that. Even after my grandmother had died and I had moved away to the city and my father was there alone, he would have a tree waiting in the living room when I came home for Christmas and we would decorate it together. And when it was all finished, I would unwrap the star and put it on the top. Then we would both stand back and admire it and not say much. But I know we were both thinking of that same Christmas in 1946.